The Miz is a character I created. He's a wrestling star, and uh, he's ready for the big leagues. I can't with that crap, man. Cora, the phone. Cora, you just don't get it, do you? He acts like he's a wrestler. <laughs> Few people in the wrestling industry have ever had the real levels of heat The Miz has. Often vilified but always underestimated, Mike Mizanin has been able to take all that audience hatred directed towards him over the years and channel it into one of the most successful WWE careers in recent memory. Yes, from reality TV star to tough enough rookie to his multiple runs at the top of the mountain as WWE champion, he's remained the ultimate utility player someone able to slot into any position the company wants him in at any given time. So how did this all come to be? Well, join us today as we take a deep dive into his entire career journey so far in awesome The Miz Story. Michael Gregory Mizanin was born in Parma, Ohio on October 8, 1980. While at high school, Mizanin showed a keen interest in sports, particularly basketball and cross-country running, where he was, at various times, the team captain for each. But that wasn't to say he was the typical jock. No, Mike was also a studious child, and this would help him get into Miami University, where he studied business after leaving school in the late 90s. Had everything gone as planned at that point then, it's likely he would have continued down this path, never entering the world of entertainment. Luckily for him then, he decided to drop out of college and follow a different path after being cast in the season 10 of MTV's reality show The Real World in 2001. So successful would he be with viewers on here that he would end up appearing on multiple spin-offs over the next few years, and would even win both The Battle of the Seasons and The Inferno 2 incarnations of the show. And it was actually on the real world that the Miz character was first revealed to the world, taking the form of an alter ego Mizanin would portray that was far more combative and headstrong than his usual self. Unfortunately, however, while many viewers were entertained by the Miz's on-screen antics, others found him to be irritating and couldn't wait to see him get booted off, this making him a natural heel in their eyes. Yes, even before he stepped foot in a ring, Mike understood all too well the psychology of being a heel. And so it should come as no surprise then that when, in 2003, he decided to start training in wrestling, he transported his Miz character to the squared circle and became an instant heat magnet during those early days of training and performing at Ultimate Pro Wrestling. But the indies were never going to be enough for someone with the ambition of the future world champion, and so in October 2004, when the opportunity arose for him to join the fourth season of Tough Enough, he embraced it with open arms, and despite drawing the ire of many viewers with his cocky antics, made it all the way to the end of the series before losing to Daniel Pewter. Still, seeing the potential mega heel they had on their hands, WWE weren't going to let this mean the end for Mike, and he was soon offered a developmental contract, from there being sent down to Deep South Wrestling, where he would learn the in-house style under the tutelage of Bill DeMott. And by July of 2005, he was being eased up to the main roster, first appearing in dark matches alongside fellow Tough Enough contestee Matt Capitelli. At one point, the two were even pegged to be called up together as a tag team, but before this could happen, Capitelli would sadly be diagnosed with a brain tumor, this effectively ending his in-ring career. Instead of going up to the main show as part of a team then, Miz was eventually called up as a solo act, with vignettes hyping his debut starting to air on the March 7, 2006 episode of SmackDown. By June, he would manage to make his first appearance, but it wouldn't be as a wrestler just yet. No, seeing more value in his character work, WWE initially used him as a hype man to pump up the crowd at the start of shows as well as making him the host of various Diva Search segments, the very competition where his future wife Maurice would be a contestant. But they wouldn't get together quite yet and Miz had other things to deal with in the meantime as, once the competition ended, he finally began wrestling, beating Tatanka in his in-ring debut on the September 1st episode of SmackDown. Following this, he would go undefeated for a full three months until his reign of terror was finally ended by the Boogeyman at that December's Armageddon pay-per-view. From there, he entered the 2007 Royal Rumble, but would only last seven seconds before being unceremoniously dumped out. This would only serve to light a fire under the Ohio native who didn't want to be relegated to the role of comedy jobber, and after a brief hiatus, he returned to in-ring competition later that year now portraying a far more intense and serious character as he began to once again rack up the wins. This led to him being drafted to the ECW brand that summer, where after a few initial appearances hosting Miz TV segments, he hit the ring on the July 10th episode of their weekly show and soundly beat Nunzio. 
Soon after this, he started a feud with ECW original Balls Mahoney after his on-screen manager, Kelly Kelly, began falling for the hardcore superstar. In true heel fashion, however, Mizanin would try to stop this from happening, reminding Kelly that he owned her contract and that he controlled where she went and what she did as a result. It was an excellent way to get heat, and now, with him truly despised by fans, WWE capitalized by solely segueing Miz over to SmackDown, where he would start teaming with John Morrison, a union that would quickly prove fruitful when the two won tag team gold on the November 16th episode of SmackDown after beating Matt Hardy and MVP. But it wasn't just in the ring that Miz and Morrison were finding success. No, where they really shone here was in their talking segments, as they began putting out a series of web videos called The Dirt Sheet on WWE.com. Here, they would mock other wrestlers in a quasi-TMZ style, this eventually leading to them feuding with Crime Time, and then later on, D-Generation X. And it was during the latter feud that Miz got to fully express his cocky heel side as both he and Morrison were able to turn the tables on the now middle-aged degenerates, berating them for being too old by using catchphrases such as are you 50? A mocking rewording of DX's own catchphrase, Are you ready? Still, despite all the talk, when the time for the match came, the young heels were ultimately unable to defeat Triple H and HBK. They did bounce back, however, when at a house show in Canada on December 13, 2008, they won the World Tag Team titles from Kofi Kingston and CM Punk. Following the loss of these belts, though, The Miz would turn on Morrison, kicking him to the curb as he moved over to Raw his sights now set on conquering the singles division instead. This rise to the top began with him calling out the company's top star John Cena on the April 27th episode of Raw. Of course, at this time, Big Match John was out with an injury, and Mike knew this all too well. Still, it didn't stop him from claiming a forfeit victory, and then continuing to do the same thing again and again in the weeks that followed. Ultimately, it wouldn't be until the June 28, 2009 The Bash pay-per-view that Cena would make his return to put the heel in his place, but it didn't end there. Another loss to Cena a week later would see Miz banned from Raw altogether as per a pre-match stipulation, this leading to a situation where he had to disguise himself as a mystery luchador, the Calgary Kid, and win a new contract in a ladder match against Eugene. And after he did win this contract, he ripped off his mask to reveal himself to the world and cut a promo that would birth his now famous catchphrase, Because I'm the Miz and I'm awesome! From there, he would continue his winning ways, defeating Kofi Kingston on the October 5th episode of Raw to win the United States title, his first singles championship while with WWE. This was followed by an interpromotional battle with the then SmackDown Intercontinental Champion John Morrison as the two old friends finally got a chance to settle their beef over the next few months. Once that was over and The Miz had firmly come out on top, he continued to defend his US title, and would even team with The Big Show for a time as the two beat both D-Generation X and the Straight Edge Society to unify the Raw and SmackDown tag team titles in February of 2010, this making Mizanin the only man in the company's history to simultaneously hold three belts at one time. Quite simply, he was on top of the world and believed that no one could beat him. Of course, someone would, but the identity of that person ended up shocking the wrestling world. Yes, on the May 17th, 2010 episode of Raw, Brett Hitman Hart came out of retirement to beat The Miz in a surprise match that left fans with a feel-good moment as the Canadian legend was able to stand tall one more time, winning the US title without ever having to take a bump. What this really served to highlight more than anything else, though, was Mizanin's biggest strength as a roster member, someone who could lose to a retired wrestler and have it slide off him like he was made of Teflon, largely because of his excellent mic skills and his fantastic ability to draw heat from fans even in defeat. And he did bounce back, of course. Hart couldn't be expected to defend the US title at this point in his career, so when he vacated the strap, Miz was able to regain it in a fatal four-way match on the June 14th episode of Raw picking up right where he left off from there. It was also around this time that he served as a mentor for Daniel Bryan on Season 1 of NXT, this starting a feud between the two that would eventually see Bryan beat Miz for the US gold. Still, the Ohio native didn't concern himself with this too much at the time because in his mind he had bigger fish to fry, and those bigger fish had taken the form of the WWE title. And that was how on July 18, 2010, Miz entered the Money in the Bank ladder match and went on to win the whole thing, earning himself a shot at the top prize at a time and place of his choosing. 
In the months that followed, he would tease cashing in on a number of occasions, but it wouldn't be until the November 22nd episode of Raw, where he finally pulled the trigger, taking out a prone Randy Orton to become WWE Champion for the first time. Needless to say, many fans hated this decision as by then The Miz had become a lightning rod for everything they hated. And this is exactly what made his title run work as in a day and age where kayfabe was truly dead, he was able to garner nuclear heat wherever he went. He even managed to get Jerry Lawler out of the commentary booth and back into the ring as the two feuded over the belt for a while in late 2010 and early 2011. But it wasn't just middle-aged commentators he was beating. No, Miz proved he could hang with the best of them when he beat heavyweights like Randy Orton and John Cena too, the latter of which coming in the main event at WrestleMania 27. The Mania match of course was a major moment for Miz Annan as he was able to silence all of his critics by headlining the biggest show of the year as WWE Champion. Sure, he would play something of a third wheel to the burgeoning Cena Rock storyline by the end of it, but he did successfully defend the belt that night and that's something which can never be taken away from him. He was also the feature of a pre-match video package that night that told his story so well that it almost turned him babyface as his history of being underestimated and bullied was presented to the soundtrack of Nas's Hate Me Now. Still, it seemed there was a section of the fan base who could not be convinced that he belonged in the position he was in, and by May 1st's Extreme Rules pay-per-view, he had lost the title to John Cena. After that, he began taking the disrespect he believed fans and the company as a whole had shown him and set about exacting his revenge as he teamed with R-Truth, the two from there going by the name of Awesome Truth and taking out their vengeance on the WWE roster. This union, and the havoc the two raised in the months that followed, memorably saw Miz and Truth be kayfabe fired from WWE on the September 19, 2011 episode of Raw, and then invade the subsequent Hell in a Cell pay-per-view in response to this bringing the whole show to a halt and ending up getting arrested for their actions. Following that, the two were forced to make an apology video on the company's YouTube channel in order to get reinstated, and from there, moved on to the Survivor Series, where they took on John Cena in The Rock in what was the latter's first wrestling match in almost a decade at that point. Unsurprisingly then, the show ended up doing major box office numbers, and it seemed to reinvigorate Mizanin to go out on his own again, as he soon thereafter turned on our truth and re-entered the world title picture. Sadly though, he wouldn't be able to regain the belt again at this time, and would actually end up going on something of a losing streak during the first months of 2012, a streak which wouldn't end until WrestleMania 28, where he found himself on the winning team in a 12-man tag team match. Following this, he took some time off to go and try his hand at acting, playing a small role in the Will Ferrell, Zach Galifianakis comedy The Campaign, and when he returned to TV in July of 2012, he was able to defeat Christian to win the Intercontinental title for the first time, and from there, defended against the likes of Rey Mysterio, Cody Rhodes, and Sin Cara before eventually losing it to future WWE Champion Kofi Kingston. After that, the Eternal Heel added a new dimension to his character when he turned face for the first time picking up Ric Flair as a mentor as he feuded with Cesaro over the United States title and then later Wade Barrett over the Intercontinental title. And it would be the latter feud that saw him briefly winning gold once more when he pinned Barrett on the WrestleMania 29 pre-show. Still, there was the general feeling that Miz's babyface run was something of a flop as he was just too natural of a heel and so, seeing this, the company chose to revert him back to his villainous ways in the summer of 2014, with him now portraying a delusional figure who felt that after having taken up the starring role in the WWE Studios produced film The Marine, he was now a Hollywood A-lister. Allegedly, Miz based a lot of this character on legendary comedian Andy Kaufman, and it certainly showed as he quickly became a standout of the show, even winning the Intercontinental title again on the July 20th Battleground pay-per-view. Soon after that, he also picked up his very own stunt double in the form of Damian Sandow, who would mimic Miz's every move, even going as far as to take bumps while waiting at ringside during matches. This ended up getting Sandow hugely over with fans, and became one of the must-see parts of Raw throughout the remainder of 2014. So popular did the gimmick become, in fact, that both men would win the tag team titles at that November Survivor Series. Sadly though, this was a union that wasn't meant to last forever, and in typical heel fashion, Mizanin slowly grew more and more jealous over the attention his stunt double was getting, this leading to Sandow finally snapping and eliminating him from the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal at WrestleMania 31. After that, The Miz spent the rest of 2015 as a solid and dependable figure in the company's mid-card. 
It wasn't until the following year when he would truly feel like a main event force again, as at this time his, by then wife, Maurice, had returned to the company after a five-year-long hiatus and began acting as a valet for him while he went on to win the Intercontinental title once more. From there, the two would portray themselves as the IT couple of WWE, and with his bride by his side, Miz had a string of great title defenses against the likes of Cesaro, Kevin Owens, and Sami Zayn, the best of which would most certainly be the highly underrated four-way featuring all of them at May 22, 2015's Extreme Rules pay-per-view. By July, he and Maurice had been drafted over to SmackDown, where they continued their winning ways, and it was soon after this when on an episode of Talking Smack, Miz cut a venomous and career-defining promo on the, at the time, retired Daniel Bryan, which saw him labeling the American Dragon as a coward and leaving fans wondering if the whole thing had been real or fake. Of course, it was all part of the story, but the emotions felt by Miz at the time were clearly real, as he had been for over a decade at that point, the man who was there week in and week out performing for fans while getting no respect for it. This promo obviously sparked something in him then, as for the rest of the year he would continue to defend the Intercontinental title in great matches, proving all his doubters wrong in the process. By now, though, even the most stringent of doubters were starting to change their tune, and it felt increasingly like, for the first time in his career, hardcore fans were starting to accept The Miz as a top-level talent. There were even some calls for the company to give him another run with the WWE title at this time, but while he wouldn't get this yet, he and Maurice would enter into a fantastic feud with John Cena and Nikki Bella in the lead-up to WrestleMania 33 one which saw them absolutely ether the babyface power couple in a series of segments that even began to draw some cheers from the audience. Riding this surprising wave of fan support, Miz and Maurice were moved over to the Raw brand in April of 2017, where they would add Bo Dallas and Curtis Axel to their stable, now labeling themselves the miz -tourage. It was also around this time that Miz became a seven-time Intercontinental Champion after defeating Dean Ambrose, though he would later have to defend this without his wife by his side. The reason for this, of course, was that Maurice was pregnant with the couple's first child, and so, as he continued to turn it up in the ring, she waited at home until March 27, 2018, at which time Monroe Sky Mizanin was brought into the world, much to the delight of the happy parents. Yes, it was a seismic shift in the life of Mike Mizanin, and his priorities would now quickly shift to becoming the best father he could be. This wasn't to say he slowed down as a performer, though. No, in fact, he only seemed to add more to his plate, as both he and Maurice went on to star in their own reality TV series, Ms. and Mrs., later that year. All while in WWE, he had restarted his feud with Daniel Bryan, who had by then come out of retirement and still had a bone to pick with the former WWE champion after that promo on Talking Smack two years earlier. This ended up leading to a series of matches between the two that, at points, also included Maurice and Bryan's wife Brie Bella in mixed tags. And while Miz would get the initial wins here, the whole thing would ultimately end with Brian getting the big babyface victory at that October's Super Showdown pay-per-view, settling things once and for all. Following this, The Miz began feuding with Shane McMahon, and it was this feud which saw him once again turn babyface, now being portrayed as a new father who was working hard to provide for his family. And this certainly made for a more successful babyface run than before, largely due to the fact that as a new dad, it felt so much harder to boo him now. Since then, though, he's reverted back to his old villainous ways and has even gotten a chance to reform his old team with John Morrison after Morrison returned to the company in early 2020. From there, the two would spend the next year winning Tag Team Gold over on SmackDown and then feuding with Universal Champion Braun Strowman for a time. And many assumed that this would be Miz's role from here on in. As a 17-year-old veteran and recent father of two following the birth of his second child, Madison Jane, Many assumed he would now be used as an established figure who could help get others over. How surprised they were then when in the summer of 2020 he began feuding with Otis over the Money in the Bank briefcase, and after executing a series of suitably dastardly shenanigans, he was able to win this from him at October 25th's Hell in a Cell pay-per-view. From there, he would tease cash-ins, fail cash-ins, and even get the briefcase back, but it wouldn't be until February 21st, 2021's Elimination Chamber pay-per-view when he would shock the world by beating Drew McIntyre to become a WWE Champion once again. As of the time of this video's recording, however, Miz has just lost the belt to Bobby Lashley, but this is unlikely to slow him down, 
After all, he's already got a huge program lined up with rapper Bad Bunny that'll likely climax at WrestleMania 37 and draw a lot of mainstream attention in the process. Yes, 2020 and 2021 have taught us a lot of things, but one of the most important has been that you can never count The Miz out, because no matter how much people doubt him, he continues to prove them wrong at every turn. Who would have thought that in 2021, The Miz would be WWE Champion again? Few were sure, but here he stands. For as much criticism as he's had throughout his career, the fact remains that he's showing no signs of going anywhere for a long time yet, and that's because he's The Miz, and he's awesome! Well guys, what did you think of the video? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, as well as follow WrestleWithAndy on Instagram and Twitter. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.